And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Machi Koro Legacy. Machi Koro is a dice rolling game where you're rolling dice and getting uh, coins and using those to build more buildings. You're building up a village. It's a very popular game, has many expansions for it. But this is a legacy version of the game, and what this means is that you will be playing this over a series of games, but each game changes from the last. This is a game where you can maybe write down or there'll be permanent things done to the board and when you're finished you'll have a different copy of Machi Koro Legacy than other people. Well, sort of. So this is going to be a non-spoiler review of the game. Um, I'm actually not even doing a spoiler review of the game because it doesn't really matter and I'll, I'll talk about that at the end. But I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to talk in general terms about it. I'm going to show you the... Uh, I, I did my overview of the game, which you're about to see in a second. I did that before I even played the game. I just read the rules and did the overview because I wanted to show you it before anything was opened up. Inside the box, here there's things that can be opened up and added to the game. And right now, all that stuff's open. But I recorded this overview before all that just to give you a general idea of how the game works. So let's watch that. And then we're going to come back here and I'm going to tell you my thoughts because I have played this to completion. Here we go. The game comes with inside the box here. You'll see that there are these pink boxes and mystery boxes and green and blue and yellow. What do these do? Well, you'll have to find out as the game goes by because what's in these boxes is secret. Everything is made up of a legacy deck and there's a giant legacy deck here. It's split into three parts. It says stop, do not open until you've gotten to certain points. You'll open up some of the cards and this is what the game will start with. These cards. Each player is going to start with a board here and you're going to start with these cards and I'm just going to go over the general rules of how Machi Koro is played. On your turn, you're going to roll a single die at the beginning of your turn. And if any of your buildings that you have are going to go off, uh, so if I, for example, I roll a one and I own a wheat field, then I'm going to get a coin from the bank. If my friend John rolls a one, this will also happen because it says it happens on anyone's turn. So each player will start with one wheat field and one bakery, uh, matching your color that you have. And this, if a two or three is rolled, then you will also get a coin from the bank, but this only happens on your turn only. So you can see that blue cards happen on anyone's turn, green cards happen only on your turn. And you're slowly collecting money. Now as the games go by and more games, different cards are going to show up. Some cards will let you steal money from other players, and who knows what else might happen. But basically Basically, these are cards here. After you're done with that, players are allowed to spend money. The, each of these cards has a cost on it to put a card in front of them. So maybe once I get six coins, uh, now if I get a seven, I can get three coins from the bank every time I roll that on, or anyone rolls that. You say, wait, how can you roll a seven on one die? Well, another thing you can do is you can build one of these in front of you. They cost 5, 10, and 15. And once you build, for example, the forge costs 5. Uh, once you build this, you can now roll one or two dice. Once you build, so you can decide to build roll two. That's how you would get the gold mine. Once you build the flower shop, uh, your different establishments that show this balloon on them, which includes the bakery, will give you an extra coin when you activate them. And this says if you roll seven, you get an extra turn. You need to build all three of these to win the game. There's also an observatory here, which costs 20 coins. When you contribute towards this, this is like a town project, you'll put your flag on it, and then you'll get the benefit on this. This may change from game to game, but once you've put your flag on this and built all three of these in, in here, then the game is over and you've won. So the whole point of the game is to get coins as quickly as you can to build these buildings. Or at least that's what the first game has in store. You'll have to wait and see as you go from game to game what happens next. Okay, so the legacy aspect of this, I want to talk about that first. And this is a 10 game 
series of games that you can play through. You play through 10 different games, and it's very specific. doesn't matter how a game ends. There's no branching paths or anything. You will play through 10 different games. When you are done with the 10th game, you can play 11 games and more, and in reality, nothing is really changed that much from game 10. And by that, I mean that this is a fully functional game afterwards. There are many games out there like Pandemic Legacy and other legacy games that you can technically play when they're done, but it's not the same. That's not this game at all. This is basically a customizable Machi Koro that you are building over the first 10 games. After that, it's your copy. And here's the thing. There's, in legacy games, there's ripping and tearing and getting rid of things. As you go through these 10 th th games, things are going to change. But if you skip a few of the legacy aspects of this, it's hard to explain that without going into spoilers. When you get to game 11, really, you haven't changed a whole lot about the game. You could reset and play through the first 10 games again if you want to. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised by the new game mechanisms. But even at the very end, and there are things like, well, you ha this is the way you decided something could be, you can kind of undo a decision you made if you don't like how something happened over the course of the game. Again, it's kind of, kind of vague-ish, but what I mean is, I'm very happy with this game as an end game result. I want to pull off Machikoro Legacy, I'll gladly do it and play it as a normal, actual game. Machikoro Legacy is closer, in my opinion, to a campaign game than it is to a legacy game. Um, so, that being said, is it different than Machikoro Legacy? Not really, it's the same game. There's mechanisms that are added in the game, and I do like the mechanisms. As you play through the 10 games, they're gonna be inserting more cards into the game. There's decks of cards you go through, for sure. More buildings that you can build, and you have the choices between those. Uh, but at the same time, they also introduce other small mechanisms throughout the game that I like. All these small mechanisms are used in game 11 and they're easy and really quick to bring in. And in fact, I think game 11 plus is more fun than the 10 that you go through. Now, you, those are like learning games as you play through them, and each one is 30 to 40 minutes to go through, depending on the number of players. It says 30 minutes, but it depends. A two-player game is obviously going to go much faster than a four-player game. Now, Machi Koro is a game that's based on luck. You roll dice, and do you roll one die or two dice? And then, you know, what buildings are you going to buy? You're going to buy buildings that only go off on your turn, but give you more coins or whatever they give you. Or you're going to buy buildings to go off on other people's turns. Or you're going to buy buildings that attack another player and let you steal stuff from them on their turn. You have these choices that you go through as you build the game and play the game. And there's that luck involved. And I think legacy of all the Machi Koros has ways to mitigate that luck more than anything else that I've seen. Now, there's still that luck in the game, Amachi Koro Legacy. There's been a couple, a couple games of this, and when we played through, came down to, you need to roll that number, and I need to roll this number, and whoever rolls their number first is going to probably win the game. But that's like a close down to the wire type thing. Another thing I want to mention about this is, one of the things I'm not a big fan of with Machi Koro, the base game and its expansions, were the negative cards. Now this game lets you kind of avoid the negativity a little bit. Uh, negativity by which I mean you roll a number on your turn and I can steal coins from you. And that can, to me can drag the game down a bit and it also can make the game not as fun to play. But there's ways around that in this game, which I can't spoil per se. But you cannot necessarily eliminate it completely, but you can definitely mitigate that in your face aspect. Machikoro Legacy is a legacy game for people who don't want to play legacy games. By that I mean I could play this with uh, my dad. You know, I could bring this out and he's never played a game before, and we could just walk through a game at a time. I kind of marathoned this. I played it over the course of a weekend. I think I played three games day one, then the next day I played four games, two in the morning and two at night, and then the next day I played three more games. And oh, then the, the next day I played a, the 11th game. But so I go through and played all that. That's a lot of time, but I could see playing this once a week. 30 minutes. You remember what happened last week. It's not that difficult to remember what happened. And while the box is in here, there was nothing. When I opened a box, it was like, what? In fact, by the time we opened the 10th box, we're like, oh, okay, I'm kind of guessing what's going to come. 
or you had some idea things that were going to come, but it was a neat, and there's a nice little story involved there about building a village and uh, an adventure that everyone's kind of going on together. But this is, this is cool. This is better than Machikoro and its expansions, and I really like it as a package. And what I really like more than anything else is that now that it's finished, it's still a game I can keep on my shelf. It's still a game that I can play over and over again. And if you came to my house and be like, I want to play Machikoro Legacy, and I'd be like, well, I'm, you know, you're going to be spoiled on it if you don't want to play it yourself, but you don't have to. You could come to my house and be like, I want to play Machikoro Legacy, and I could pull out the game, and we could play through it with all the different stuff from the, those 10 games added in, and you'd be fine. You don't have to, you know, you, you would be spoiled. You wouldn't go through those 10 games yourself, but you could easily learn all the rules. Machiko Legacy, with everything thrown inside it, is still uh, not that complex of a game. It's certainly more complex than base Machikoro, but that's fine. I should also say, as a Legacy game, because there's these 10 set games, every game there was something a little bit new. One of the problems I have with some Legacy games is you play through it and then you play the next game and it's like, well, it's the same as the last game. And Legacy has that sense of exploration. For here, each of the ten games, there was something new at it, something new at it, something new at it. And that makes it a lot of fun. So, recommend it for sure. Machikoro Legacy. Whether or not you like Legacy games, this is one you might want to check out. Daisara Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.